picked up your, your wind shirt. Um, thanks a lot, Alex. So we have uh, have a nice little wind shirt for people. Um, if you've gotten that, so uh, Rudy put this together for us. It's got uh, you know the, the foundation logo and various things on it. So if you haven't picked it up, make sure you do. Um, should keep you you know kind of warm in the uh, uh, in the damp weather that we have going uh, this week. Let me put that aside. That was, I'm sorry, Alex. I've got a pocket in here. Okay, so let's see. I've got slides. I just don't know how to run them. Okay. This one. Left button. Aha. Uh -huh. So welcome. There we go. Fantastic. So I just wanted to say welcome to everybody. This is a um, it's a great opportunity for us to get together once a year. Um, last year, as you know, we got together in Ann Arbor. Well, I don't talk loud enough, apparently. There we go. So last year we got together in Ann Arbor. We'll go through a little bit of that. Um, I want to, number one, say uh, thank you to our sponsors. So one of the key things for us is that um, uh, we try to make this meeting as affordable as possible so as many people can come as possible. Uh, and the cost of, of hosting the meeting is defrayed by our sponsors. Um, we have uh, our platinum sponsor this year. Uh, again, on the top is Rancho Biosciences. Thanks a lot, Julie. Fantastic. Um, our gold sponsors, we have The Hive, Thomson Reuters, and Dexter. So thank you, guys. Uh, on our bronze sponsorship side, we have a, one of our newest uh, members of the ecosystem here, uh, uh, ITTM from Luxembourg. Uh, so they're sponsoring along with Imperial College. So thanks to you. And as we go along tonight, um, we have our, our dinner sponsor, Converge Health. I think uh, Dan is, I saw Dan, there's Dan. Dan will be uh, giving us a few words of wisdom. And then we have uh, BT is sponsoring lunch and Elevate is sponsoring uh, the awards tonight. So. So you know these guys and you know all of our members are what make these kinds of meetings possible. I just want to thank all of them uh, and make sure that you reach out to them. I also want to thank our, our hosts, um, Garrett and, and Ramon and the NKI. Um, this is, is a really special thing for us to have you guys come in and host us. When, when you host things like this for us, this also makes it possible for us all to come together. And this is really how our community comes together uh, as a group, and I really appreciate that as well. So uh, what you'll find is we have a fantastic facility here. Uh, as Raymond mentioned, we have breakout rooms. We'll be having our board meeting uh, here today, uh, later this afternoon. We have uh, the science session. We have uh, the hackathon. So some great facilities here for to take advantage of. Um, so what I want to do is give a little background coming from last year. This is our third uh, annual get-together, our third annual meeting. Um, our first was uh, hosted by Sanofi in, in Paris, in Chili Mezzera and uh, was a fantastic thing. And then we followed that up last year, alternating back to the United, to the U.S., uh, hosted by Ann Arbor, and we'll talk about that uh, really quickly. Um, but what I wanted to do is take a, a moment just to, to frame, uh, very much as Garrett did, what we're talking about here from a meeting perspective. And in my mind, uh, one of the key challenges of, of translational research when with all of our pharma partners will we'll recognize is that uh, you know trying to go from basic scientific discoveries to marketable therapeutics is a long and tortuous path, and one that is fraught with uh, with failure. And the key challenge that we have, to Garrett's point, is to learn more about disease biology and more about patient phenotypes so that we can get better at doing that process. Uh, every one of us knows that the the productivity is decreasing uh, over time and the expense is increasing, and those are trends that just can't continue. When we look at the the translational science problem. It's a big data problem. So uh, you're all probably familiar with the three the three V's of big data: volume, uh, variety, and uh, velocity. And when we look in this space, um, we have all of those. So particularly when we start looking at variety, the types of data that we're trying to pull together, the volumes at which it's coming at us, uh, is really a, a key challenge. So uh, what we want to do is really try and focus on this 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 process in between. And, and focus on how we can apply new technologies, new capabilities to that process. The last thing I want to point out here is that when we look at how, how we do innovation, 
we all can look back through history and recognize what's happened to our industry, going from where we have uh, an increased R&D spend. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry, in fact, spends more of its top-line revenue on R&D than any other industry at over 20%. Uh, you see industry consolidation. You see in-licensing. You see reorganization. Then you go through outsourcing, cooperative technology development, and finally to one of the most uh, appropriate means and, and effective means of, of doing innovation, which is open source. And that's what brings us all here today, is focusing all of our efforts collectively as a community, pharmaceutical, biotech, academic, nonprofit, all working together in a public-private partnership to achieve a common set of goals, which is to improve human health. And I think that's, uh, that's really the, the challenge we have for this meeting and the challenge we have working together. And I want us to all make sure that, as, as Garrett said, we keep focused on that goal. Last year when we got together, we talked about these sorts of things. I'll give you the, the quick summary. Unfortunately, um, uh, our sponsors from last year usually come and, and help us with that review. Uh, University of Michigan was our sponsor last year, and uh, unfortunately, uh, they have a number of things going on. They just uh, developed a new uh, institute for data science and have become very, very uh, busy with that. So neither Brian nor Kevin were able to show for this. So I will stand in for them. Our, our meeting sponsors last year, you know, uh, I'll point out that Rancho moved up from gold to platinum this year, so <laughs> everyone else should follow their example. Uh, but we have, uh, you know, a, a similar set of sponsors. Uh, we have grown the sponsorship list a, a bit, and what I'll tell you is that uh, I'm very happy about this, is that we, we doubled our sponsorship support from last year to this year. Uh, so that's been a fantastic effort, and, and we really appreciate the sponsors jumping in and doing that for us. So that, that's always the fourth C from my perspective. The fourth C that we have to think about, even though we're a nonprofit, is the C for cash, which is uh, that's what makes things happen. Um, but those are sponsors last year. When we looked, uh, looked ahead last year, we, we got together and talked about these four Cs, which is you know, what's happening in the code content community space. Um, and we set out some key directions to, to move. So we wanted to you know, activate and empower, put together some new working groups, et cetera. And if we look back and see how we did, uh, we, we've had a pretty successful year. We've, we've done a lot of activation of the 3C committees. Uh, in the content side, we've, we've gotten things rolling. We have a number of key new working groups. We have a catalog of available content. And we're working, we're very close to having the repository of public content all ready to go. Is it there? <laughs> Julie has it on a USB stick. So we're building that repository of public content um, and then uh, becoming really the go-to platform for curated uh, public content in the space. And so that's, that's where we're getting to. Um, we also laid out trying to get training done. Uh, training, we've trained uh, over, uh, I think it's close to 400 people over the last 12 months uh, on the initial use of Transmart. We have a monthly free training course, uh, one month hosted by Rancho Biosciences, uh, the next month hosted by Thomson Reuters. Um, how many of you have, have participated in that training course? Okay, well, one of the things I've noticed this is probably why we have 80 people signed up for training at the meeting. So we're going to be running lunchtime training sessions, um, which Julie, your team, I think, is, is leading? Yeah, with, with, um, with, with the There you go. So the Hive is, is doing training. We've got uh, Rancho doing training. And so uh, we'll be doing a lot of training. There's training on how to do data loading, how to use the platform, et cetera. So, uh, I guess many of you signed up. If you haven't signed up for it already, uh, please do it. It's, a, it's sort of a bag lunch training. You've got to go grab your lunch and come in. Uh, but I think it's really exciting. But one of the things that we've really tried to do over the past year and we set out last year was improve uh, the knowledge base in our community of people who know how to use the platform. And as I said, we've trained over 400 users this last year. And uh, we look forward to continuing that forward. We've also been developing deeper courses. So not just a, a basically an introductory course, but you can delve deeper into the platform. So those are exciting elements. Um, we also uh, started uh, an effort on open data and focusing on, on things in, in datathons. We had a, a great datathon uh, at the end of June this year uh, with uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation in neurodegenerative disease. And I have to say the reverberations of that are quite great, and I'll get into some of that. Um, we also wanted to focus a bit on data loading, and we've gotten some of the ETL very cleaned up and, and going there. We're still working on some of the other aspects of this, full support for I2B2, genomics data, value, uh, uh, gen genomics, data visualization, and more. These are key aspects of what we're doing in the 1.3 project, which we'll hear a lot about uh, later. And then finally, from a, a, pers a perspective of the foundation, we've actually gotten to ourselves uh, to the point where uh, today, as we'll report to the board this afternoon, we have 16 months of cash based on our operating spend in the bank. 
Uh, so the foundation is in a good financial position and able to continue to execute on its, uh, its activities. So that's, uh, that's a nice update from what we laid out last year. Last year at the 2014 annual meeting uh, at University of Michigan, we had 130 attendees, uh, 44 organizations represented. Uh, we had a very, a very similar agenda to today, 70 sessions over a three-day period. This time I think we have 72 uh, sessions, uh, four keynotes, etc. cetera. Um, we have, uh, as, and as we have in your program uh, today, uh, we have three seat committee and working group meetings that will be happening uh, as we go. Uh, there was a hackathon on three themes, and there were panel discussions, a group dinner, uh, etc. Uh, this is the group that uh, was there. I think many of you recognize your faces up there, and we see many new faces, which is fantastic. So it was a very successful meeting last year. We kind of set out some key things that we wanted to do. I think we've done pretty well in achieving that. We still have some things left on the list, uh, and those are things that we can continue to push forward for, for this year into 2016. So as we look at our meeting this year, um, I'll just remind people of our key sponsors, and uh, I'd love to see more names up here next year, so I think if, you, if you're building an effort in this space and you're interested, please let me know. Um, what I can say is that uh, uh, judging from some of our key sponsors like uh, Rancho Biosciences and, and like The Hive and Thomson Reuters, uh, sponsorship here actually builds your business and, and helps build uh, what you're doing. It's a great uh, opportunity to get in front of people, particularly a very focused way with our, our community. So thanks again to our sponsors. Key themes that our organizing committee has come up with uh, for this year um, is first off is, is really enhancing the platform. Uh, this has been a year of, of change along that. Number one with what we've done on the release program for 1.2 has been really introducing some good code governance and, and code development and release practices. That's been done through our quality initiative and quality working group. Uh, we've been improving the release program. We've established a Transmart uh, project management committee that now is in charge of the release and providing that level of governance. For the 1.2.5, Terry Weymouth is our release manager working with the project management committee to, to get that out uh, and having a much more advanced uh, testing process in that uh, release program uh, as we go forward. And the whole idea there is to improve the, the reliability and the stability of the platform and to ensure that each new release of the platform is better than the last so that we're constantly improving. Um, the release, the point release program is one that improves stability and, and capability from a functional perspective. Um, adding new features uh, is a new, a new release. And so we'll hear quite a bit about the developing uh, aspects of the version 1.3, which is a, an ongoing development process. Uh, and then uh, as we talk, and, and Kays will take us through, is what is our thinking about what's after, after this kind of a release? Where do we go next? And that's going to be one of our continuing themes for this meeting. Uh, we have a very active board uh, discussion uh, based and focused on this uh, this afternoon. And when we talk tomorrow at the, uh, at the members only session, uh, we'll have a very good discussion about paths forward. I think this has been something on, on our minds and that we've been working towards for the past year. And we'll have some nice things to talk about, uh, about that as well. And that's really, you know, how do, we, how do we design the next generation platform? How do we implement that? How do we all come together and sponsor that as a community? How do we resource it in a way that it's going to get done in a reasonable time? And the third theme for us is growing the foundation. Uh, we have, as, as Garrett pointed out, uh, a very vibrant uh, ecosystem of different kinds of capabilities and technologies in this translational research domain. Uh, the foundation was originally established around the Transmar platform, but as we'll hear uh, throughout the meeting is we're, we're looking at bringing on new capabilities, new functionality, um, and new projects. So we'll, be, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Open Bell, which is a new project that's coming into the foundation and other new projects. We've been growing the staff. Uh, one of the key things that we've been focusing on is how do we build and transition from research grade software to commercial grade software. And so uh, we've hired a new VP of engineering. I'll just ask John to stand up and introduce himself. But John O'Hara is joining us. So John is used to drinking from the fire hose. He comes from the telecom industry where technology innovation invented big data um, and uh, I think really has the, the commercial experience through a, a number of companies that he's built and grown and, and commercial products that he's produced where to him reliability means uh, five nines or six nines of uptime. That's the, the kind of focus we want to get to with the Transmart platform. So he's, he's joining the foundation to help lead us in that design and engineering process to get us from from the research grade platforms to the commercial grade platforms. Um, I also want to point out that 
and we've built the membership quite substantially this year. We have just this quarter four new members uh, that have joined the foundation at the silver level. Um, I'll go through and have a list of those in a second, but uh, I'm very pleased to bring on new members uh, to the foundation. And uh, one of the things as we go through the demographics, um, over half of you that have come to this meeting today are not from a member uh, organization. And that's something I'd like to change. So if you're not from a member organization, let me know and I'll help you become members. Um, that's one of my jobs. In terms of, of thinking about key objectives along our, our four C's uh, going forward and what we're going to check off next year is we're going to finally have that catalog of available content completely done with the repository and hosting of content in a Transmart ready format. Uh, one of the key things that we are working towards and the content committee has been really pushing is being able to distribute data sets with all the ETL and code and scripts that you need to be able to take it and load it directly. And, and Julie has with her uh, you know, data that is already in Transmart ready format that you can immediately load into your platforms and that's what we're going to be growing over the next year. Train more training, uh, deeper and better training. Uh, this I think is really key to growing our community and to have trained over 400 users over the past year I think is great, um, but I want to double that in the next year. So we're going to talk about that, we're going to go through training, and as you go through the training courses, what I hope you will do is provide feedback back to the trainers and back to the foundation on what works, what doesn't work, what we can improve, what you want us to focus on so that we can bring that towards you. I will notice that in the training, I think we had um, the most people sign up for the data loading piece, which to me is really fantastic because you got to get data in before you can work with it, and um, that's critical. On the code side, there's an awful lot to focus on here with the code committee, uh, work that we're doing on the point release, 1.2.5, which is still being worked on, uh, the development release of 1.3, and then the next generation platform. So there'll be a lot of discussion there, a lot of focus, and that's one of our key objectives overall. And then uh, one of the great things that happened this past year is, uh, is the foundation received its 501c3 nonprofit tax exempt status from the IRS in the US. Yeah. Thank you. It, was, it took a long time. It was a lot of hard work. But we did achieve that, and that's really important to us because it allows us to access additional types of funding, grant funding, uh, philanthropic funding, other ways to bring resources to our community to augment what our members and what our, our collaborators and partners are doing. And so that's something you'll see a lot of emphasis on as well. So next year, I hope that we're going to check all of these off and say that we've worked together and found ways and paths forward. Uh, just a quick couple quick things about the meeting. I thought people would be interested. This year we have 163 registrants for the meeting, so uh, that's quite an improvement over last year. It's about a 20% increase. Um, we can see that we, we're being very successful and being very diversified across our membership. We have academia, pharma, uh, nonprofit research institutes, and vendors all represented, uh, which is really critical for us. We have a very diverse community and one that's growing. Um, if we look at attendees by membership, um, we have 9% of our attendees come from a, a gold member organization, 35% from a silver member organization, uh, and then 54% come from a non-member. I want, I want to have more people next year, but I want this one to be smaller, right? We need to join the foundation, come together, work together. There's a lot of benefits to being a member, which I hope you'll find as we go through the meeting today. Um, but really, a lot of participation in the 3C committees, in the governance, even participation at the board as we have our board meeting and, and have the governance of the overall foundation. So please participate. We have a great uh, agenda. I think everybody has a copy of the booklet here. Also, uh, we have everything on the Lanyard site, which I'll have a slide on in a second. Um, We'll go through and, and follow that as nearly as we can, so we'll try to keep the time. Um, everyone who has presentations, I just want to inform everyone that we're going to be recording on GoToMeeting. Um, if you do not want your presentation recorded, please notify us, particularly through Alex, who's doing the recording, and we won't record your session. But er otherwise, everything will be recorded and will be up on our YouTube channel so that we can continue to go back and revisit some of these presentations. So if you don't want your, your presentation recorded, please let Alex know. Uh, and then we won't record that, that for you. But otherwise, everything will be done and up on the website. Um, you know, I'm not going to go through a lot of the details of the meeting, but I think we have a, a great meeting. And as, uh, as Raymond pointed out, we have, uh, we have the science track in here. We have the technology track. Uh, we have the, the, the hackathon that will be going. We've got a great poster session coming tonight. Um, dinner tomorrow night uh, should be a, a great uh, setup from there. Um, 
posters need to go up tonight for that poster session. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm quite, well, unfortunately, Martin is not going to be able to join us uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, Christian Everling, is Christian in here? So Christian uh, will be standing in for Martin, so I'll just call you Martin throughout the meeting, Christian. <laughs> but uh, Christian will be talking a bit about what, what's going on with uh, the Open Bell project, with the Adionomy project, and, and some other key things. Um, but um, one of the things I'm quite excited about is that we had the, the Cross Neurodegenerative Disease Datathon uh, this year, and we've invited um, the five teams that participated to come back and update us on, on what they did. Uh, four of the teams uh, have, have shown up to do this, and so we're really pleased about that. And so we'll have a really nice session on what the power of doing datathons are. And what I'll do is presage that with a little bit of how difficult they are to set up. Um, but I'll also let you know that we are now in the early planning stages uh, for our second datathon, which we're going to host at Imperial College. And if anybody, anybody here seen the, the Global Data Observatory at Imperial College? Besides Yanni, who's, who's uh, Peter's seen it. Jay. So um, this is really a, a completely new way of looking at, at very large data sets and interacting with data. And the group there has developed a, a, a prototype interface for Transmart that displays on the Global Data Observatory. And if you don't know what that is, it's, it's basically 48 flat screens in a 300 degree circle, uh, four high, 12 across, uh, that you use as a single display. And so you can put enormous amounts of data up there and really uh, nice visualizations and work with it as a team. And what I want to see is when we put a, data, a datathon team in that environment and they can work with these kinds of data, what kinds of things they come up with. And uh, we're hopefully going to put together a hackathon to precede that so that we can work on some really interesting visualizations and, and analytics that will go on that, uh, on that platform. So I'm, I won't go through all these details. I think everybody knows the meeting. I think I'm running out of time. Yes, I am. Um, I do want to say a thank you to our foundation members. So these are our member companies today. Um, I'm told that we actually missed one here. So we have uh, eight gold members, 16 silver members. Um, and so uh, it's not only our, our sponsors that make this work for us, but it's also our foundation members uh, that help sponsor us here. And so uh, we're very pleased to be growing our community uh, and having new members join. So if you don't see your company up here, sometime during the meeting, come up and talk to me and we'll figure out how to a way to get there. Uh, I'd also say I'd like to say thank you to the planning committee, which did a, a fantastic job of putting things together. Uh, it took us, you know, over almost nine months to, to put together this meeting. Uh, Ramon and Pauline uh, from here, from the host facility, have been fantastic in working with us from when we first met. You know, what is that? About nine months ago uh, to go through the facility. It's been a, a fantastic uh, process. Uh, Kays and, and Vard from uh, uh, the Hive have been fantastic in participating there and organizing the hackathon that we'll go through. Uh, David Perug from uh, from Dexter. Is David here? Ah, there's David. I haven't seen you since uh, since Paris. Fantastic. So uh, David was was really great in helping us there. Uh, Jay Bergeron from Pfizer uh, and with uh, with Sherry Sal uh, from Sanofi, who are down here. And they can hi. Okay. Um, uh, Julie Bryan from Rancho. Um, so I don't have to point out here to anybody who Julie is. And then uh, finally from the foundation, uh, myself, Rudy, and Kevin. Unfortunately, Rudy and Kevin couldn't make it to the meeting, um, but uh, they were really instrumental in putting this together. And in fact, Rudy, as our internal foundation chair, uh, did a fantastic job of organizing this. So if you ever, yeah, here's a big hand for Rudy. <laughs> So uh, that was fantastic. Uh, I just want to point out some of our key session chairs. We'll have, a, I think there's a, there might be a change here, Jay. I think we're moving you around. Um, what we've asked is for key members of, of our community to chair individual sessions. So uh, this morning, Ramon has been chairing the session. This afternoon, uh, Keith Nangle uh, will be chairing. And Keith, did we change this? So I think Jay has to step into the board meeting. So. So we're going to switch uh, switch here and here. Okay, so so Warren will be uh, will be chairing the tech session this afternoon, and Jay will be doing the one in the morning. Um, and our other chairs here, so we have Peter Rice. Everybody knows Peter. There's Peter here. He's one of our session chairs. Uh, Dan will be chairing our dinner session. Dan, well, everybody knows Dan as well. Uh, Keith Nangle, David will be chairing the tech session on Friday morning. David's up here. Um, and then uh, uh, we'll have wrap-ups with Julie and myself at the end of, uh, of our third day. 
And then finally, um, everything that we have here, I find this to be the most useful thing. You can make sure that you tag the, the events that you want to make sure you get to, and it will remind you. Uh, but everything is up on Lanyard. Uh, also, if you want to see presentations from last year, they're all connected to last year's Lanyard. And as we get the presentations recorded, et cetera, up after the meeting, they'll be linked in here too. So this is your, your sort of single source to getting to everything that's here. Uh, we'll also update this with scheduled changes like what we'll do with uh, Christian and, and Martin Hoffman's uh, presentation. So that's, uh, that's your device piece there. And finally, I just wanted to close with, you know, sort of uh, just a quick chuckle. But I saw this, this article, or this, uh, this comic before, and I love this. It says, before the great subscription crash of 2017, scientists believe that the more inaccessible the study, the greater the impact. You know, this is really, I think, the challenge that we're trying to address here, which is making data available. And so I'd like to change this to be, uh, before Transmart, scientists believe that the more inaccessible the study, the greater the impact. And what we really have the challenge to do is to make that true. Um, and I do believe through things that we've done, like the Datathon we did this last year, we're making changes. When people find that the data that, that is out there becomes accessible, they can see what's in the data, what's not in the data, how useful the data are, and we can actually begin making findings on those data. And that's the thing that I, I think is the key outcome that we're working towards. So with that, I'd like to say thanks. Welcome again. Um, I'm looking forward to a fantastic meeting. Throughout, um, if I can just have the foundation staff kind of raise their hands real quick. So we've got John, myself, Keith, Peter, Terry is over there. He's texting me his hand. Okay. Um, but, uh, and then we got Alex over here who's uh, joined us from, from Michigan, who is our, our fantastic technical support guru. Um, any, anything you need, you know, see one of us. If you have questions, feel free to grab us, talk to us about any issue that's of importance to you. But uh, we want to make this a fantastic meeting. And if, when we get together at the end of, of Wednesday, um, I hope we have a lot of great conversations to summarize. So thanks again and welcome. Thank you.